Hey, this is uh, Zach Log the Great, and I am here once again with my friend Chris uh, discussing last week's poem. We are talking about uh, uh, Paul Lawrence Dunbar's We Wear the Mask. Uh, Chris, say hello. Hey, hello. So, uh, Chris, would you like to start? What do you have? What's uh, what, what? What do you have to say about this? What's your initial initial thoughts? Uh, well, to begin with, I enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, I think with poetry, enjoying it is at least somewhat important. But also, it does give you a lot of th lot to think about. Uh, just to begin with, it's we wear the mask. There's different ways you can interpret the we, which does change the meaning and makes it a little bit more interesting. Yeah, um, I, I I actually um, picked this one up uh, years ago, um, and I have I've mostly you know had it. I, I, I memorized it a long time ago, and you know mostly been able to keep it in mind like the first half, and just you know kind of re. Uh, Re uh, studied it once again to uh, to bring it to memory for this time, but it's um, it's a uh, it's a very you know there's history with the piece and it's also very interesting um, you know just on its own it's um so um, would you like to talk about I think you have, I think you had something to say about the author uh yeah well it's just kind of interesting Paul Lawrence Dunbar he's an interesting character uh. Both well, he he was a black guy, and both of his parents had been slaves. So I think it was like 1860s or so where slavery kind of officially ended. And he wrote this poem in particular. It looks like 1895, 96. Right. Uh, so he was in a very interesting sort of position because he he was a black guy that was writing things that were being read by mostly sort of like intellectual white class. It seems like that would have been a very unusual position. And at least in the little uh, summary I read of his life, uh, it seems like he kind of did target his writings towards what was expected of him, uh, which kind of makes a lot of sense in the context of we wear the mask. Well, um, yeah, and, and it's um, and you can definitely put this in the con the uh, you know context of, of his you know specific time and his specific situation, uh, being a you know black man in America in the um, you know late nineteenth late nineteenth century, um, and you know and then if you want if you take if you take that then the you can take the we that the poem is you know speaking for and that we can become um you know can become black people in his time um and i mean there's you know definitely definitely something to be said for that um i think if i think and, and um i i i think if that's all you want to do with it you're kind of you're kind of losing a lot of it though um well, good so I feel like the we, uh, definitely part of it is he's referring to himself as a black person and black people in general, what they've gone through, what they were currently going through. Uh, but at the same time, he, w he seems to have been conscious he was writing to a white audience. So he's con it, I, I think he's kind of inviting his white audience to place themselves like into that same position where they like some of these people, well, basically, you know, a, a good portion of the, the, the country, like they were still having trouble coming to the, to grasp with like, like they had just a generation ago been selling these people like they were animals. So just getting the white audience to sort of meet him halfway I, I feel like he's sort of inviting the white audience into his point of view, but leaving it general enough where they can still relate to it. So there's definitely a very general sense, but then you can also read deeper into it. 
Yeah, and I think, um, like, I, I think this is something that most of us, you know, most of us experience, most of us understand what he's talking about. Like, you don't, like, you don't have to belong to, you know, this particular class um, for this to be something that makes sense to you. Um, you know, it's, um, you know, all of us, you know, have, a, a, you know, a lot of our lives where, you know, someone we, you know, someone we care about greatly is sick or we're you know, deeply worried about some kind of financial situation or a hundred things are going on. But at the same time, you have to get up and you have to go to work and you have to deal with a world where, you know, none of this really matters to them. They just, you know, need you to, you know, produce a product or perform a service for them. And if you let your, if you let these things weighing on you interfere with that, then you're not like, you're not going to be able to function in the world. And yeah, so pe um, people don't like to feel bad. And if you make them feel bad because it looks like you're going through something, then they might not necessarily associate it with not liking you, but they're not going to want to be around you, not going to want to interact with you on the same level as if you made them feel good. If you're smiling, then people will enjoy being around you a lot more than if you're frowning and seem unhappy. La laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and the world laughs at you. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's quite the original saying, but I think it works pretty well too. The, um, and the other, um, it's, uh, what is it? I remember reading uh, from, I think I picked this up from uh, an article from uh, cracked.com years ago um, when they were still funny and not just social justice. Um, but they had one about like, you know, uh, I think it was like foreign words that English, that the English language could use. And um, one of them was, one of them, it was a pair of words um, from Japanese uh, and, I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing, mispronouncing this terribly. Um, and, you know, any, any you know, Japanese scholars or just speakers watching this, you know, can, can mock me all you want. It's, but I believe the words are, are he, it's hene or hone and uh, tatame, which are um, basically the um, socially acceptable lies we have to tell as opposed to our real feelings in, you know, what's, what's actually going, going on inside of us. And it's just, you know, even they, they have a word for it. It's acknowledged that this is just how things are, um, which is, in, it's interesting that they, um, that it, it's su such a part of their culture that they, that their language, that their language acknowledges this. Yeah. But we, we definitely have that in America. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Uh, just fine. No problems whatsoever today. Um, you know, despite the, yeah. Um, and uh, what was, uh, I, I also, you know, on, on, a, on a rather different level, I, I did find it interesting, um, just like having written some, you know, poetry myself, and I, I wouldn't uh, claim to be a uh, great writer, but, um, you know, I've, I've, I've worked, I've worked with this, and I, I've, I've, you know, played with language, and it's, I believe this poem is like 14 lines or so, and he uses two rhymes the entire way through, um, which I find impressive. Like that's, that actually takes, um, like that in itself takes some, takes some work to, to use um, two rhyming words um, for, for that long, two not rhyming not, sounds for that long. Not only that, but he, he has like lies, eyes, and then he has subtleties, which shouldn't work but it does well it's uh it's two things i mean there's um i mean there's off rhyme and you know you you see it from time to time um i doubt it's been long enough that no no like the language hasn't shifted that much um like some things uh we look at in older um you know in shakespeare uh where today, today it looks off, that's because they were probably actually pronounced differently. We're, we're pretty sure about that, but um, this is not a case of that. But it's, um, it's also a case of, um, and I think it kind of fits what the poem is talking about, because it's just, um, you know, one, one of the things you can do with off rhyme is just create this little sense of um, uneasiness, that it's not quite right, which 
fits this poem very well. Um, right. it, especially because it feels like it's just slightly off and the word itself is subtleties. Yeah. So, um, uh, not a very long poem and, you know, it has a pretty, does, doesn't, uh, it, I, I think it has a message most people understand. I don't think it takes a great deal of analysis. Where, was, there any, was there anything else you wanted to talk about with this? Uh, well, there, there was a few things that I, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, one of the things, and this, some of this sort of came up through me just reading other people's thoughts about it. And, uh, and I do have one that sort of I, I came to by myself. But I do like where it hides our cheeks and it shades our eyes, the second line there. He's talking about the mask, and yeah, that's going to hide your expression. But also, if something is shading your eyes, that's also going to affect how you see the world. Right. Um, that's true, because like you, um, if, you, if you're putting on a false face, it's going to affect how... Um, like, if you act something long enough, it starts, you know, it can start to become true, or at least it can, uh, it can warp your view and warp your perception of the world. So yeah, that, um, that makes sense. And it's, um, it's, and again, it's just one of those things like you can't with, with, you know, the world we live in, it's hard to imagine how things could be any other way though. Like it's just, it's, you know, part of human, it's part of human experience. It's you, you know, there's pain and, you know, and everyone endures, you know, some kind of suffering. And most of us at some point in our life will endure some pretty awful things, but, you know, you just got to get up and, and, you know, get on with it and, you know, try to try your best not to let it get in your way. And, and try not to show it because there are very, what is, uh, it's, uh, you know, something from uh, Dennis Prager, you know, there's, um, there are very few people, you know, in the world who actually care how you feel. Most people care how you act and that is it. Um, and then if you're lucky, you'll have several friends who will care how you feel and your family and not even always them. So it's um, yeah. The uh, the next thing that I, I thought was pretty cool is uh, one place they they pointed out the sort of sarcastic tone in the the second verse there. Why should the world be overwise and counting all our tears and sighs? Well, if you take the we as sort of a universal humanity, well then it's basically something that's staring everybody in the face at some point in their lives. So it should be a very obvious thing. And it's like, oh, wh why should the world, you know, notice this thing that's literally right in front of its face? Uh, and I, I thought that, that was sort of an, uh, like, it did not jump out at me at first. But once I read that, I was like, well, that kind of makes sense. Uh, now, one thing that I, I thought was pretty cool in the, the last part of it, the... Uh, we sing, but oh, the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile. Okay. Like, that, it's like, okay, they're singing, but the work is hard. And I feel like I don't know how much truth there is in this, but there is the sort of a stereotypical image of, like, slaves singing while they're working. I, I do like in... Uh, blazing saddles where they sort of turn that around and the uh the black hero gets the uh gets the white boss to sort of act it out for him but beyond that it also reminded me of uh rich mullen's song uh my deliverer where it's sort of the the people of israel and then broadening that out later in the song to sort of the just the people of the world where life is hard and there is hope that hope is in the future, but we're going to sing about it now. So now is still rough. The, the deliverance is coming, but it's not here yet. 
So there is sort of a hope, but it's a hope that's long off. Right. It's, yeah, I have to, I'll have to think about that one a little bit. Um, okay, well, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't have like a ton to say about this one. Um, I like it and, you know, I, I definitely, it definitely rings true, you know, to my own experience, you know, of my life. And, you know, you've seen other people um, who, you know, if you know, if you know what's going on, you're like, well, good job just getting up this morning. <laughs> but you know, they're not just getting up. They're, they're, you know, actually going out there and being useful to other people. And so it's, um, yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it, it's just, it's brilliantly written because there's, you, you can make it pretty much as personal to him, to sort of like his race all the way up to humanity. So he, he wraps it all up and it's just very well done. And yeah, that is one thing I definitely um, like in, uh, in literature, something that can be, you know, read on, something that can be read on several levels, something... Where um, if you don't know any, if you if if you read this and have no idea who he is, like it still says something. If you read this and find out who he is and what his circumstances, it says something a little different and you know a little more. Um, but you don't have to have that, and you um, and so it has you know several. It, it has um, it has several levels of that you can read at, and I think that that's a. a good bonus feature as well yeah and just like uh child roland this the sort of like struggle and endless toil is just very <laughs> present in there well I'll, I'll try and pick something a little more cheerful for uh for next time hopefully we'll have a a uh, slightly more upbeat conversation <laughs> um any uh, did you have anything else on this one uh, that was pretty much it. I mean, you can, I, I feel like you could go pretty much line by line and get really sort of like in there. But at the same time, I feel like that's more of a sort of, if you're interested in it, like you can read articles about it. It might get a little old us just sitting here rehashing. Yeah, I don't think we need to do a, uh, a to do a close textual analysis. I, I, this wasn't intended to be a classroom; just uh, just a fun look into these things. Um, all right. Well, uh, I think that wraps it up. Um, and uh, thank you for joining me tonight, Chris. And God be with you. Thanks for having me. Have a good one.